guys y'all honey magic here and back with another video this is gonna be another postpartum update on me and baby and how things have been going um and just like any updates that have happened since my last postpartum update video so as of now i am almost six and a half months postpartum um, if you haven't, definitely check out my three and a half month postpartum video because um, I'm not going to repeat the things that I've said in that video. Um, so yeah, <laughs> she was like, I got to be part of the video if you're talking about postpartum things because he wouldn't be postpartum if it weren't for me. Look at her little frizzy hair. <laughs> I got to get her a baby bonnet. That's what I've been wanting to get her, right? Um... So yeah, so she's exclusively been breastfeeding for the most part for these past six and a half months. And I have introduced some solids, um, but nothing crazy. She's only really had fruits. And just recently, like two days ago, I introduced sweet potatoes. And we made, I um, had like a sweet potato puree. Um, so what I've introduced her to, the first thing that she had was watermelon I think like I just gave her a piece of watermelon she just sucked on it so pretty much watermelon juice she's had pineapple like sucked on the pineapple um, banana she loves banana sometimes I'll like mash it up with a little bit of breast milk and just feed it to her and she likes it that way and what else has she had I tried to give her I had like a peach puree baby food that I had bought she didn't like it and then when I really looked on like the, the baby foods that I like to get are the ones that's purely just like the fruit mixed with water and the peach one I just assumed they were all like I had looked at one for this brand and it was like the mango and water one and she likes that one and then I tried and I just bought a bunch of those baby foods um, and some of them actually are not purely like the peach one it says like peach concentrate and lime juice and concentrate and shit so she didn't like that one which is not surprising because it's not even really peach so that and then I introduced the sweet potato puree which is just sweet potato and water and she wasn't too fond of that I don't know she she's iffy like sometimes she really likes them and she'll like suck on them and really want to hold it and experience it and other times she wants nothing to do with it and she'll make like this nasty face and I started introducing fruits like when she was maybe five and a half months and then here we are a month later and she hasn't really it's not like she's eating it every single day it's just kind of randomly whenever I feel like doing it um, and I'm not pressed you know I'm not pressed to like push the solids on her um, it's kind of just going at her pace and you know breast milk is the best thing for them so I'm just gonna continue to breastfeed as long as possible until she doesn't want to breastfeed anymore. Um, so yeah, that's um, an update as of now. Um, she also had she also self weaned herself off the pacifier. Um, that was something I was worried about because I know what I, the research that I was doing was saying like babies shouldn't use a pacifier past six months and. Um, I didn't like I was using the pacifier a lot in the beginning because it was helpful to give me time away from her because she always wanted to breastfeed um, and I'll link down below the pacifier that I that I used for her but she just naturally around like four months she just stopped taking it and then you know I would try to use it every now and then she was never she just stopped she just didn't want it anymore and it was really easy so I was happy about that I didn't have to like do anything because sometimes I see these kids out here they're like two years old still using a pacifier and it's like not that there's anything wrong with that you know to each their own but I just didn't want her to be one of those kids <laughs> so she just you know naturally kind of was like I'm done with this um so do 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 what else development oh my god she is really 
she's off the charts with this shit. I haven't weighed her in a bit in a minute because I personally still have not gone to the pediatrician because there's no need to. She hasn't been sick. She is growing exponentially. Um, the last time I weighed her, she was about 18 pounds. So I'm assuming she's like, and that was a while ago. So I'm assuming she's around 20 pounds ish. Um, but I measured her the other day and she is 28 and a half inches. So she's almost um, grown a full foot since birth. So that's great, my tall little baby, yes. She's so tall and she got big old feet. You could tell she is gonna be a little Amazonian, just like, I mean, I'm tall and her dad's tall, so it's not surprising. <laughs> um, yeah, but she's been like talking. Um, she kind of says like, lie, 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 lie. Like I swear she's say, trying to say her name because like, I call her lie, lie all the time. Um, she also says like dad da like rad da 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 like that kind of sound um so she's changing up the babbling sounds it's not just the same like random cooing and stuff it actually kind of sounds like things more and i'm encouraging her to say those things and i'm happy that she's saying those things even though it's like you know i'd love for you to say mama too <laughs> Sorry. um i definitely encourage it and that's another thing we've been um i really have always loved other languages and I never was like fully fluent in another one so I try to speak Spanish to her when I can like she has some cartoons that she watches in Spanish and I'll like you know watch with her and French as well because I know I know French I don't know Spanish so it's like as she's learning Spanish I'm learning too but I try to you know communicate with her in that way and same with French so she's you know learning her things <laughs> Um, she's also, I believe in the last video she had started kind of like sitting up, um, but she sits up very strong now on her own, like now when we go to the grocery store I don't have to take the car seat in, she can sit in, in the front part of the cart, so that's really exciting and like helpful because like the car seat takes up a lot of the shopping cart, so it was really annoying going grocery shopping <laughs> trying to like fit all my stuff in the, in the cart with her in it. And she loves, she likes it so much more sitting up than sitting in the car seat. Like, she would always fuss in the car seat, but sitting up in the top part, she'd just be looking around so excited. She loves seeing things and just being more, you know, just aware of what's going on. Um, so she's sitting up for way longer. She's rolling over without a problem, both sides, both ways. She's starting to, like, creep um, a little bit, so she'll... She pushes herself up on her hands and knees and she's like attempting to crawl but she's not fully there with it like taking like you know real strides like that but she is really getting there and she's starting to like shuffle and move herself in whatever way possible like she's really moving a lot <laughs> it's like I can't even keep up with her sometimes um, other milestones that she's hitting is she is um pulling herself up to stand as well so like she's trying to crawl but she's also like really hyped to walk you could tell like if i hold her up and like put her on the ground like this kind of thing she will like take steps literally and now she's starting to pull herself up to stand on her own like very effortlessly if she has a ledge or something whoop, she up <laughs> So that's another reason why I gotta watch her a lot because <sighs> this child is moving, moving and grooving. Mm. Ain't no stopping her, ain't no holding her back. No. Mm. So fun story, she actually has fallen off the bed twice now and my bed is not that high. It's probably like two feet up, maybe three. It's not that high, but it still was like oh my god that was like the most stressful thing ever so and it happened like back to back like two days back to back to one another um, so. so i had her in the very corner of the bed like the top back corner that's like completely against the wall and she was lying on her back and i had to use the bathroom no one was home so i couldn't like just drop her off with someone or whatever so i go into the bathroom I'm literally just on the toilet <laughs> and a few seconds later I hear boom and then she starts crying and I get up and run in the room 
and she's on the floor crying and I just pick her up immediately and I'm just like it's okay it's okay and I'm just you know like rubbing her I'm checking her everywhere to make sure everything's good she was fine nothing was wrong with her um but I was just like damn like she really fell and like I started you know I just put her on the boob after she fell asleep she was good like and I was I was so worried because one I was home alone two this was the first time that ever happened I started crying because I was just like yo what do I do and I called her dad like immediately and I was just like please console me I feel like the worst mom ever and he told me you know you're not a bad mom because she fell off the bed it just shows how she's really curious and like every child has their story of like falling off the bed like you're okay she's okay don't worry he made me feel so much better and I was just like so thankful for him in that moment like okay you're right like everything's good she's fine and she was fine um, so, <laughs> as you can see so then the next day um, and even my mom said the same thing. She was like, every child falls off the bed. Like, welcome to motherhood. You're good. Like, she's oh. fine. Like, you fell off the bed. Your brother, your sister. Like, we all fell off something. Like, and everybody's always fine. So the next day, I'm literally in the room. And she's lying on her back, same place, back in the bed. And I'm doing my hair in the mirror over here. And then all of a sudden, boom! And I look and she's on the floor and she starts crying and I pick her up like, yo, what the heck? How did you fall off again? And that's when I realized it's like, I just can't leave her unattended anymore on the bed because she just rolls and rolls and rolls until she just gets off. And she's just so curious, wants to touch everything, grab everything, like, so she just ends up hurt. And you know, those are the consequences. Like, sometimes shit's gonna happen. Um, <laughs> yeah sometimes shit's gonna happen <laughs> um and she had like a little like cut on her eye i guess from her fall but it wasn't anything big and like i just put some breast milk on it and it's literally already gone because this was a few days ago that this happened so you know it happened and everything's good though so to all my moms out there like I had to really remove my that guilt and that shame for myself like don't feel guilty for when your child gets hurt with these things because it's only natural it's like they're learning how to how to do you know grown things so <laughs> shit's gonna happen like you fall but you get back up and it just also showed me how resilient babies are and how like we're just made to kind of take these falls and tumbles sometimes but you know we get back up everything's good yeah yeah that's the thing she'll like hit her head or you know hit things sometimes and she doesn't cry like the only time she really cried was when she fell off the bed because there's times when it's like I'll act like the other day I accidentally hit her head on the car when we were like getting in the car and she literally didn't react and I'm just like bruh <laughs> you are just so she reminds me of Jack Jack from uh, The Incredibles like she's just a resilient baby she's very aware she's very social she loves like whenever we go out into public people always are like oh my god she's such a cute baby and they just want to talk to her and she'd be babbling it up smiling it up flirting it up she's a very very social baby and it's like annoying for me sometimes because I don't like socializing with people that I don't know to be honest um, <laughs> and I'm a very like introspective person so even when I'm in public it's like I'm I like to be social with people that I know and I'm cool with but like when I'm around people I don't know I don't want to talk to you especially strangers and she's constantly bringing attention into our bubble and it's helping me to learn boundaries and to be more like assertive with things but it's also just like damn like leave me the fuck alone and it's showing how how like some people really be overstepping boundaries when it comes to babies like I've had people do some weird things like just come up and start touching her and just randomly pick her up and I gotta really be like yo chill out this is my child you can't just come in here and just pick her up and take her away and do it like it's one thing if you're family and I'm like you know handing her to you and you're doing whatever but strangers I don't know you why are you trying to pick up my child so yeah um so yeah she's developing great I pretty much like I said I'm her pediatrician so I haven't taken her back I check her weight her height to make sure she's growing at a steady pace um, and you know as long as she's filling her diaper she's pooping she's peeing I know she's getting the nutrition that she needs from my from my breast milk um, 
And you know, I'm patient with her. I'm not trying to force her like, you gotta eat solids, you're six months now, you gotta have them, you gotta have them. It's like, you know, and when she's ready, she'll be ready. Um, she's also been teething. She's been teething for a while though, like, it, it comes on and off. Like, I think her bottom teeth are kind of coming in. Um, her hey. bottom front too. Um, so yeah, I'm her, I'm her pediatrician. She's help, she's healthy, she's happy. She's meeting her marks. She's meeting all the developmental marks, like weight and, and height as well. Um, hasn't gotten sick at all. And you know, she's good. I trust myself and my intuition and my motherly instincts and abilities. So I don't need someone else to tell me the obvious, to be honest. Um, so another thing is I have, so I traveled with her by myself twice i mean we travel all the time in terms of like going to the store and things like that her and i but we went to her and i took a trip to washington dc and we also took a trip to new york city and that's what i mean in terms of like you know more long distance traveling so my baby has now been out of state <laughs> um and it was a lot i'm not gonna lie traveling alone with a baby is a fucking lot like i had when i was going to dc i took a bus down there i had her stroller a suitcase and um a big carry-on bag and her and it was a lot um but i did it and <laughs> traveled there and back on my own um and then we also traveled to new york and that was a lot um because a lot of the subways are not really like stroller friendly so it's hard like carrying her plus the stroller plus my bag but it's possible and i was able to do it so you know anything's possible but it really made me realize like i have so much respect and kudos for any moms out there that have multiple kids and are traveling on their own because just with one it was a whole lot especially she's breastfeeding and like people are just so inconsiderate sometimes like everybody's trying to bum rush to get onto the bus they see me struggling with a baby a stroller a suitcase and a big ass carry-on bag but nobody wants to stop and like help but eventually every single time somehow i manifested somebody to help me out like and it's always men of course <laughs> but i was always so appreciative of them like yeah i've had like it was hard but i always manifested like somebody to help me out when I needed it and so you can do the same um, in terms of jobs and stuff like that um, I'm still doing the newsletters for honeydew holistics and I will link them below as well so sign up for the um, weekly newsletters that I do um, and then as of now it's really I'm just being supported by mm -hmm. friends and family <laughs> and I'm working on developing my own businesses. I'm starting my training for becoming a doula, and I really wanna switch things up for doulas, for anyone giving birth, and really be in my own lane, kind of. Um, so, it's, you know, it's been brought to my attention by some beautiful souls that, like, fathers are not included in the process of birth, pregnancy, postpartum, like, they're really, not and a lot of doulas don't focus their attention towards fathers and i really want to change that um as i get this training as i develop my courses that i want to do for women to help them through their pregnancy through their birth through their postpartum period i want to simultaneously include fathers and men in that process and i know that's going to take me communicating more with um other fathers and other men that and finding out what it is that they exactly need for support because I just see it's too much of the same pattern and too much of the same things that are going on in terms of just like men not knowing what they need to do for women and women not feeling fully supported and men not feeling fully supported as well so as I you know continue on my doula studies this has been like a two year long process I'm excited as I like you know really cultivate that skill so i start my official training actually the end of this month and i'm really excited for that so be on the lookout if you want me to be your doula in the future um i'd be honored so i'm fully putting together my my personal services as we speak and i have some other projects and things in the works i'm not gonna 
fully announce them now but just be on the lookout for me you know i'm really on the come up right now <laughs> um and i'm excited for all it's okay i'm excited for all the projects that you know i'm working towards developing right now so yeah um I love being a mother <laughs> it has taught me a lot of valuable lessons like patience um, unconditional love and it's helping me learn a lot about myself and where I still have am triggered by things and how I can like continuously heal myself and grow into a better version of myself um, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was just like mom time and self-care because one thing that I've really realized since becoming a mom is it is so easy to get lost in motherhood, to lose your sense of identity because all you spend your time and days doing is just being a mom. I get it. Because um, now I see, I had like a realization that like my mom, my own mother, doesn't want to lose me and my brother specifically because we're the youngest doesn't want us to like move out and really be doing our own thing because she, once we do that it's like all she has left is herself like her whole she put her everything into being a mother and I'm so thankful and appreciative of all that she's done and very grateful for it but at the same time I see how she lost herself and put everything into us and that's why it's like she would get angry when my brother and I chose to do things differently than how she would have wanted us to do it because it's like she was living through us instead of living for herself and was just so focused on being a mother that now it's like she has nothing left like she doesn't even know who she is or what she enjoys doing outside of being a mom and I don't want to be like that so you know and it's easy it's so easy to just like be that and to like be angry and bitter and allow that energy to be projected onto your children and everyone around you and I get it but now that I see that pattern it's up to me to break it so I try to do everything that I can to do things for myself and sometimes what I'll try to do is like incorporate both like mix being a mom with what I enjoy doing like I love spending time in nature so sometimes I'll just take her we'll be out in the woods or whatever or go for a walk that is mixing momness and what I enjoy doing like it's the simple things I enjoy swimming so we go to the pool I go to the pool with her um I enjoy eating so I mean you see what I'm saying it's like the simple things um but I also love nighttime like I've always been a night owl and an early bird at the same time but now more than ever like when she goes to sleep because normally she'll go to sleep about 9 10 i stay up like till like one sometimes depending on the night and i just like allow that time for myself i'll either journal write you know do my yoga dance a little listen to music just like allow that time for me to just sit process reflect and just like do a little bit of self-care it's hard, I'm not gonna lie, but it's like very imperative that all moms make time for themselves and find ways to incorporate self-care and things that you enjoy and love to do within your day. Um, and it's also important to me that I don't give up my dreams and continue to do what it is that I want for myself because I want her to be able to look up to me like, yo, my mom did what she wanted to do. She really like followed her dreams, followed her heart so that she knows that she should do the same thing and it doesn't need to look like what I think it will look like for her. It's gonna look like what she wants for herself and no matter what, I have to be willing to let her live out her life how she wants to and not project my wants and needs onto her. So, you know, just wanted to put that out there. So, yeah, that's my six and a half month postpartum updates. Um, be sure to subscribe to my channel, comment, like this video, um, share this video. And if you have any suggestions or things that you would like me to make videos on, topics that you want me to discuss, please feel free to leave those suggestions in the comments below or, you know, email me my contact information is in the description below so yeah 
um that's it <laughs> shout out to all the moms out there you are loved you are appreciated you are supported and shout out to all the dads out there too you are loved you are appreciated supported because without you we wouldn't even have children and you are all amazing and you deserve to be a part of your child's life it's not just moms that need to be doing this work it's dads too it's all of us we got to work together because once we come together that's when we truly are able to birth a nation you hear her grunting as she's on this boob <laughs> a breast milk baby <laughs> yeah <laughs> um okay <laughs> so peace out y'all honey magic out <laughs>